Okay guys, we're putting foam down. Um, a couple people asked me to video us putting foam down. Well, this is putting foam down. You just put it down. Not much to watch. Not much to it, right, Big Biscuit? Just we just grab them and drop them down. Yeah, grab them. Sure you got plastic on them. Grab them, set them down. We put poly underneath for a vapor barrier. And that's how we do it. Yeah, it's like weights. We pick them up and we put them down. Right, right, Chris? We pick them up and we put them down. So that's us putting foam down, guys. Here comes the moon! Hey, Chris! Watch here, buddy. Get your boot time. Here comes the mud, man! Hi, buddy! <laughs> Here we go! Well, what do I hear? Here comes the mud! Whoop, whoop. Here comes the mud, guys! Here comes the mud! Here comes the mud! Here comes the mud! Here comes the mud! We're gonna put the cut out in the out there. I guess it don't matter as long as it's not at the end. Yeah, slide it in there. We got a little we got a little deep spot in the middle, guys. That we got a um, there's a load bearing wall that goes down through here. So we put foam down here. And we're just overlapping it a little bit, and that's gonna give us uh, a little thickened area for uh, that load bearing wall. It's just gonna be six inches thick there. And that's how we did that. They didn't give us much detail on the blueprint. We just said they want a little thicker down through there. It's a truss, but it just, there's a load, there's a wall that goes down through here. Bears a little bit of it. I'd, me yeah, measure it out. It'll get a better. Great thinking, boss. Yeah, that's what I do, buddy. Always thinking. Paid the big bucks for. That's right. Nice cloudy day today. We got our porches done. There's that. And there's that. We got them done this morning. And now we're putting our foam down. Then we got to put our tubing down. And then we are pouring tomorrow morning we're pouring this main house section and we're gonna do this garage part on friday so then we just gotta plaster it and we're out of here okay guys this is the tubing that i get right there it's half its oxygen barrier pex tubing hey guys so here we are putting our half inch oxygen barrier tubing down um i get this in thousand foot rolls from uh, Supply House is the place I get it. It's right online. They'll deliver it right to your house. Like I said, this is a thousand foot roll. I just like to roll it out and the guys will tie it. Right here, Chris is rolling it out and we're tying it down. We use rebar ties to tie this down. You can use uh, zip ties if you like. Um, we had good luck with those um, little metal rebar ties and they're cheaper. You can get a thousand of them for like 20 bucks. So. Um, it's a lot cheaper than the zip ties and they seem to hold really well so we're just tying this on a one foot grid guys down to the wire mesh and uh, you can see we're just looping it around and then we'll head back to where the manifold is we're gonna do three loops here um, these are not considered zones they're just loops this is all gonna be on one zone this, this whole uh, first level here of their house gonna be all on one one zone so uh, that's how we did it guys I got some real good videos on how to put this tubing down where I break it right down for you if you haven't seen that um, check it out I'll try to remember to link it to this video so that if you need to reference that how we do this tubing we do miles of this stuff so um, I got a system that I use that works pretty good so make sure you check that out if you guys aren't a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the not bell not notifications too. Thanks.
So here's the tubing layout, guys. I'm looking towards the garage area. There's not much tubing going down through this middle wall. You gotta fasten it just at the ends here. I'll show you the other end. If you stay in about five feet, you should be pretty good. There's three loops in here. They all come out here. They exit down through here. Out into the garage. So that's how we did it. Hey Greg, stick a piece of foam in there, will you? Just kind of block that off. Just cut a little piece of foam. That's the tubing layout. We covered up the porches so they don't get splattered today. This is how we did this detail here, guys. We cut the inside of the block up the concrete down low we're gonna pour to the top of here we stuck our anchor bolts in when we poured it we left them high so that they're already in there that's how we did that you can see when we pour it it's gonna be right up boom right up flush with the top concrete's four inches thick and we got the thick spot down through here that's the load bearing wall it's gonna be about um seven inches thick there Six and a half to seven inches thick. That's what we got today. We're gonna pour this bad boy. Big biscuit overslept today. They beat the concrete truck at least. 7:33. Concrete's supposed to be here at 7:30. At least he beat the con. Hey, you beat the concrete at least. What do you got to say for yourself, Big Biscuit? I'm impressed that I slept through that much shit. Yeah? I'm not impressed at all. <laughs> I'm not impressed. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Hey, at least you beat the concrete truck. I guess I guess we'll give you credit for that one. Okay, guys, we got a bunch of rebars here that we're just going to drop in as we pour. Because the wall sits on here. This is uh, about three inches thick, so I want to drop this rebar in there. Just kind of, you know, every three or four feet, we're going to set one in. I got them all just laying there. After we pour it, we're just going to drop them in. Just to strengthen that area where the wall sits on top of here. And it actually sits here. Just to strengthen that up, we're going to drop those rebars in all the way around the entire perimeter. Just something I wanted to do. Because last time we did one like this, we didn't do it like this. We actually put the sill plate on and poured up to the top of the sill plate. So the sill plate was wide. And when you set the wall, you could see a little bit of it, but the flooring covered it. But we're going to do it this way. This is kind of how the carpenter wanted this one. So this is what we're going to do. So I got those bars there. Just wanted to show you that detail. We cut this foam, like I said, after. Um, if I did it again, I would uh, definitely cut them first before we set that last block in and just pour to the top of it. But we didn't know we were going to do it our way and then he didn't like that so changed it in the middle of everything so that's what we ended up doing we had to go in here with a sawzall and, and cut these around cut that foam down around kind of a pain but we got her i think i hear my concrete coming yep it's all set up ready to go here comes our mud hmm rolling in circle t with the conveyor we got a 4,000 pound mix with fibers and we got a super plasticizer high range water reducer in there so we're gonna pour it at um, at least a six to seven slump we got Rob big Rob today coming in uh, circle T if you're in the local area 315-963 Two two three one is their phone number. They uh, they've been taking care of us real good this year. Two two three one. Yeah, that's what it says, I believe. Yeah, two two three one nine six three two two three one. We're gonna back him right in here. We should be able to shoot this whole thing. 
from that area. Back them right up to the middle if you can. Here we go. I'll put this bad boy on a tripod, try to get you some footage. Stay tuned. Way too thick, guys. About a four and a half to five slump. We're looking for about a seven slump. It's got the high range water reducer in it. Okay guys, so we got Greg running the trimmy hose, you got me there magging things out, and you got Big Biscuit and Tuna puddling, they're just what I call puddlers, they're just raking the concrete around. Um, Matt's going to be uh, doing the bow floating here, but you can see what we're doing, We're just mag I'm just magging around these uh, different obstacles here, and right now we're setting some grade with a laser. And then we're going to pull that off. Me and Matt pulled that off. That's what's called a wet screed, guys. That's just concrete at grade. Here we are doing the edges. And I got the power screed today. So right here, you're going to see me buzzing down through there with the power screed. Um, knocking it right down fast. And you got the puddlers behind me. You can just, here I come right now. You can see they're puddling it behind me, keeping it where I want it. I'm just going to work right around that obstacle. So that's pretty much how we poured it out, guys. We just got our marks and uh, using that power screed. Here we are. Just Greg's just putting it right in there nice how we want it. And uh, Big Biscuit's puddling her down. And then I'm setting my uh, marks with the power screed and just buzzing it off. That's how we do it right there. And no, we didn't pull the wire up here, guys, because there's tubing in this thing. We don't pull wire mesh up with tubing in it because that brings the tubing up to the surface of the top of the concrete and it will get damaged. And uh, it works really good right on the bottom, right, right against the foam. So you can see here there's a second truck that just pulled in. We had the first truck empty. The second truck's pulled in and he's going to dump onto that conveyor right there. You can see. He just slides in beside him and he dumps right on to him and uh, that's going to give us the rest of our concrete. So these conveyor trucks are really nice guys. Um, some places in the country doesn't don't have them. We're lucky because we can uh, utilize this tool very well and it makes it so you don't have to wheel a lot. When we're doing tubing like this we don't really like the wheel on it because it's you can damage the tubing if you're not careful, but I mean, you can wheel it if you're careful. You don't um, let the wheelbarrows hit it. You can see we're just doing the same old thing, guys. I got the power screed right down through there. You'll see Matt there. He's just grabbing the bull float. He's bull floating it in two different directions, trying to go right behind me and just flatten everything out and close it up. 
It's kind of windy out here by this pond, so we want to get it closed up as quick as we can here. And you'll see here, we're just going to finish up buzzing right down through to the end, right there. Finishing up, finishing up. So that's how we did it, guys. That's how we poured it out. Stay tuned. I got some uh, power trowel action here as I finish this thing off. And you'll see how we uh, did the tubing for the garage after we poured the floor. While we waited for this to dry, we uh, put the tubing and the foam in the garage part. This concrete has uh, fiber mesh in it too, guys, just so you know. So guys, I started power troweling here. You can see uh, you got Greg and uh, Biscuit. They're doing the edges. They're just reaching over. It's nice you can reach right over and hit the edges. If you look in the background, you can see Tuna back there with the tamper. He's tamping the garage area because what I like to do here is uh, when this concrete's drying, we're going to be working on that garage, getting it ready. Just trying to utilize everybody while they're here and uh, get this project done. But that's what we're doing. You can see Tuna. He's just tamping everything away. Greg's right here in the front, um, hitting the edges, and I'm power troweling, getting her done. Okay guys, I hit it once with the power trowel. Greg's hitting the edges with the steel trowel right now, smoothing them out. Um, I couldn't quite hit over here yet, it's so still a little soft, I was sinking in, so basically with that whole first truck we hit, and I hit a little bit onto the second truck, but and let that second truck firm up a little bit if you're walking in it and you're leaving deep footprints then it's not quite ready so when i got over into here you know, i was just sinking in a little more than i like and the trowel was kind of sinking you can see where it was whipping up and i got combination blades on there they're called combo blades so some people run folk blades i run combo blades so i don't have to take them back off That's what we're doing. We poured the floor here, guys. And now we're putting the tubing down. Everybody left, except Tuna and Biscuit and me, like left us know. to put all this tubing down. Everyone except for the ones who don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> we're always the ones with you. Yeah, that's what we're doing. I got a good video on how to put this tubing down. I'll link it to this build series. <laughs> 